We here at the Sports History Network proudly partner with 26 podcasts, all revolving around the history of sports. But did you know that many of our hosts were sports history authors way before they started their shows? It's true. We've got Joe Ziemba, host of When Football Was Football. Joe Zagurski, host of Pro Football in the 1970s. Mark Morthier, host of Yesterday Sports. Tommy Phillips, host of Lombardi Memories. And Scott Adamson, co-host of From the 55-Yard Line. All these authors have many books for you to choose from. To check them out, go to our website at sportshistorynetwork.com slash sportshistorybooks. Pick up your copy today! Soundtrack provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello again, I'm John Gidley, and welcome to another trip into the football attic. Today we're going to talk about the 1992 San Diego Chargers, who turned in one of the strangest single seasons in NFL history. You'll hear why shortly. First, a little backstory. The San Diego Chargers are, of course, now in Los Angeles, which is the greatest injustice of the modern-day NFL. Now that I got that off my chest, on with the rest of the story. In the late 1970s and early 80s, the Chargers fielded one of the most exciting offenses in the history of pro football. Led by Hall of Fame quarterback Dan Fouts, they were known as Air Coriel, named after their head coach Don Coriel, and for their propensity for utilizing the passing game. Fouts threw to such dynamic receivers as Kellen Winslow, Wes Chandler, Charlie Joyner, and John Jefferson. In the rare opportunity that San Diego ran the ball, they ran it well with Chuck Muncie. Unfortunately for the Bolts, the offense was always there, but the defense rarely was. On several occasions, the Chargers would lose despite scoring 30 or more points. They also were never able to get over the hump in the postseason. They won the AFC West three consecutive times from 1979 to 1981 and had home field advantage in the AFC playoffs twice, but never made it to the Super Bowl. Gradually, Air Coriel came back down to earth. Don Coriel was fired in 1986 after starting 1-7, and and Dan Fouts retired after 1987, leaving football on a sour note. After starting the 87 season 8-1, the Chargers lost each of their final six games and missed the playoffs. This marked the beginning of a dry spell in San Diego. The Chargers finished 6-10 in 1988, 89, and 90, and went 4-12 in 1991. Head coach Dan Henning was fired as a result and was replaced by Georgia Tech head coach Bobby Ross, who had led the Yellow Jackets to a share of the national championship in 1990. Ross replaced quarterback John Freeze with Stan Humphreys, who would never be mistaken for Dan Marino, but was a solid field general for the Chargers. Ross also saw the potential that San Diego's defense, particularly the defensive line, led by Leslie O'Neill and rookie Chris Mims, and the linebacking core led by third-year star Junior Seau had. Ross brought in veteran defensive coordinator Bill Arntzbarger to guide them. Arntzbarger had been the defensive coordinator for both Miami Dolphins teams, that won the Super Bowl in 1972 and 73. Despite all of these offseason improvements, things didn't get off to a great start in 1992. The Chargers lost each of their first four games to the Chiefs, Broncos, Steelers, and Oilers, getting shut out that day in Houston 27 to nothing. However, San Diego got back to 500 by winning each of their next four over the Seahawks, Colts, Broncos, and Colts again, shutting out Indianapolis in Week 9 26 to nothing. After a heartbreaking 16-14 loss at Kansas City in Week 10, the Chargers were 4-5, and and their playoff hopes looked dim. However, their seesaw season was not over yet. In Week 11 at Cleveland, with the Browns leading late 13-7, Humphreys threw a 45-yard touchdown pass to Anthony Miller that gave San Diego a 14-13 victory. After a 29-14 home victory over Tampa Bay, the Chargers easily dispatched of one of their hated rivals, the Los Angeles Raiders, 27-3, before a near-sellout crowd at Jack Murphy Stadium a rarity in this era of Charger football. San Diego narrowly avoided an upset in Week 14 by beating the Cardinals in Arizona 27-21. After a 27-10 home win over Cincinnati in Week 15, the Chargers and the Chiefs were tied atop the AFC West with matching 9-5 records. The Bolts had already won their most games in a single season since 1981, but were looking for far more than that. That next Saturday, they got an assist from the slumping New York Giants, who handed Kansas City a 35-21 upset defeat at the Meadowlands. Galvanized by their good fortune, the Chargers went into Los Angeles the next day and crushed the Raiders 36-14, blowing away the silver and black for the second time that season. In the final week of the year, San Diego wrapped up the AFC West with a 31-14 victory in Seattle over the two-win Seahawks. 
When all was said and done, the Chargers won each of their final seven games and 11 of their last 12 to reach the playoffs for the first time in 10 years. The Chargers' first home playoff game in 13 years was that next Saturday. Their opponents? None other than the Kansas City Chiefs, who had beaten San Diego both times they played that season. After a scoreless first half, Charger running back Marion Butts gave the fans life with a 54-yard touchdown run, and the Bolts never looked back. The defense terrorized Chiefs quarterback Dave Craig, sacking him seven times and intercepting him twice. The final score was San Diego 17, Kansas City nothing, the first time in 10 years that an AFC playoff game had ended in a shutout. The Chargers advanced to the AFC divisional round the next week, having to travel to Miami to face the Dolphins. Despite having matching 11-5 records, the Dolphins were a much more experienced team when it came to the postseason. Dan Marino was playing in his ninth career playoff game, and Don Shula was coaching his 32nd. This experience would turn out to humiliate San Diego. The offense never got anything going. Stan Humphreys finished 18 of 44 with no touchdown passes and four interceptions. The defense turned in its worst performance of the season, with Marino throwing three touchdown passes. The final score? Dolphins 31, Chargers nothing. That's right, San Diego won a playoff shutout, then lost a playoff shutout the very next week. Oddly enough, they actually became the second team in NFL history to do this, joining the 1985 Los Angeles Rams. Thus ended one of the more bizarre single seasons pro football has ever seen. Losing each of your first four, winning 11 of your last 12, shutting out a postseason opponent, then being on the opposite end of a shutout the next week. The Chargers would reach the Super Bowl two seasons later, but where they were routed by the San Francisco 49ers, 49-26. to It is still the only time that one of the unluckiest franchises in all of sports has made it to the Super Bowl. Thanks for joining me for this trip into the football attic, and I hope to see you again next week. In the meantime, check out all the other great podcasts here on the Sports History Network, and follow me on Twitter at JFG Sports. Until next time, this is John Gidley. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. We at the Sports History Network are thrilled to work with our sponsors and partners. With their support, we are able to produce great content for you. The other cool thing is most of our sponsors and partners offer discounts to pass along to our fans. So if you go to the sportshistorynetwork.com slash sponsors page, you'll find Row 1, Royal Retros, Play Classic, Thrive Fantasy, and Mega Seats. All of these offer great discounts. Specifically at Row 1, you can save 15% at the Row 1 Gallery with the code SHN. The Row 1 Gallery includes over 5,200 reproduced sports history prints on a variety of sizes of wood, metal, canvas, acrylic, or poster paper. The Row 1 Shop also has thousands of more unique items with retro and historical designs dating back to 1876, including t-shirts and long sleeve shirts, phone cases and mugs, blankets and pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. With Royal Retros, they're the king of throwbacks. They've got jerseys, shirts, hats, collectibles, and more from defunct leagues and other teams in those leagues. From Play Classic Games, it's sports simulation board games. Just use the code SHN for 10% off your first order. From Thrive Fantasy, it's a daily fantasy sports and esports app for player props. Use the promo code SHN for instant 100% match up to 100 bucks. And with Mega Seats, they're tickets with no fees. You can save up to 10% with the code SHN. So check them out on the SportsHistoryNetwork.com sponsors page. That's SportsHistoryNetwork.com slash sponsors. The soundtrack is provided by Kevin McLeod of FilmMusic.io.